Alright, man. I'm gonna t- I know it's recording, but take a little sip of the water. Hey, BJ, don't okay. cut this out of you. I'm gonna take a sip of the water. You know, you know what I'm saying? But let's get to it, man. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Men the Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jordan Flowers, here with my boy, Hale and Trey, for another episode of our Going With The Flow series. Um, we're continuing to crank these out. If you don't know or you're not familiar, this is your first time tuning in, this is where we kind of break down some current events and what's been going on these days. So without further ado, I want to keep it to Trey, but hold on before I keep it to Trey. I really do want to um, have a little segment I want to do real quick. Um, so if you've been following us along for a while or kind of know who I am as a person and the things that affected me in life, um, today is a really emotional, but a really significant day for me, um, and this podcast. So my dear friend Ramsey, this is his birthday. Um, if you know me, you know, that was the reason his death and the consequences and the fallout of all of that, um, led me to getting into the mental health field and doing all the things that I'm doing. Um, with psychology. So I just wanted to um, really share a moment of gratitude for him living. I mean, obviously, it was just a really, really hard day for me and a really, really emotional day for me. But he meant so much to a lot of us um, where we grew up. So and and and, and all the things that I'm kind of inspired to do in life is directly um, reflective of how he lived his life. And one of the things he did when he lived his life was a goofy dude, fun loving dude. So it fits into this series, and uh, yeah, man, I just wanted to take a moment to honor him and the life that he lived. But on that note, let's get with it. Trade up. What we got, man? What's the first topic on the docket today? All right. Well, we're not going. We're not going to get into the fun yet. I was just. Um, it was actually. I think it was, was like last week. I was thinking about. I was like thinking back about like when I had first graduated, when I was job searching, like getting out to the adult world, I was like, you like kind of get it at first. Like you jump in your job search and it's fun. It's like, I have all these opportunities. I don't have to go to school anymore. Um, Jordan, you don't really know much about this cause you're still in school, but you, you get it. You get it. You did. You, you took that little, the little gap, the little break that you did. And you, you understand where I'm coming from, where you had the job and all that, the jobs you're still working now. But, um, I'll say something that I was just thinking back on was like, and I thought I wanted to talk to you guys about it. What do you think, so we'll go with you, Hale, first. What do you think um, was a big, like, revelation that you came about, like, after you got your job, after you had been, like, secure, you got a place, and you were actually starting in the adult living, doing the adult life after college? Like, what do you think was the biggest, like, thing that you realized that was different from where what you had been doing this whole time, like, your whole life? Yeah, my biggest realization is finding a purpose in life, to be honest with you. Um, now, there is a lot of factors in my situation. So maybe you don't know, quick recap. I used to play college football with Jordan. Um, once that was over, I had my own athlete identity crisis and um, needed to figure out what my hobbies were, what were things I like to do and everything like that. But going into the real world, <clears throat> it just exaggerated that. Because if you didn't have any hobbies, school took up a lot of your time. And then you can always just go drink somewhere. You can figure it out. You can go, you got right. all these people around you that's your age. You can always find something to do. But leaving college and actually being in the workforce and realizing, you know, okay, I live by myself, uh, I go to work, but the coworker is, it's not a bunch of people that are my age, right? It's a whole different conversation that's being had there. And just trying to figure out your hobbies, what do you like to do? And purpose is the big thing because it's like, where do I go from here? Like, okay, this is what I wanted to do. Uh, This is what I like and stuff. But what's my drive? What's getting me up every day? What's my day to day? What's the singular goal that I'm working towards? Uh, So that that would be a big thing for me is trying to figure that out. I wouldn't say I 100% figured it out. But um, pretty further along than when I started, that's for sure. And definitely have my hobbies at this point. There's definitely plenty of things I've realized that I've liked to do. Um, but if I can leave anyone with this, is that if you're in that same boat that you're just starting off, I would just say try a lot of things, honestly. 
Yeah. And would B, you say that's how you got out of B, your hobbies? Like figuring out what your hobbies yeah. were? Yeah, absolutely. I got to the point where I had to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, which shout out to our college offensive coordinator for that one. But I had to get to a point where it was like, okay, you know, this is something I really want to do, but I don't really have a person to go with. So I'll just go by myself, you know, whether it's a sporting event, movie, anything like that. Right. And um, just doing that, figuring out, okay, I like this. I don't like this. One big thing that I realized that I like is hiking. I actually really enjoy really? hiking and I'm from a suburb town of Chicago. So there's no, there's no hiking spots out there really. And out here in St. Louis area, you know, it's, it's pretty good. There's plenty of spots. And then when I go travel, I love to go to like different hiking spots out there and being out there in nature and all of that stuff. Oh, so you like an organic want to be a national park dude now, huh? They said no, that no, I am us, not but doing that's you that. Now, huh? I'm not. Bro, the first time I see Smokey the Bear, I'm leaving. (laughs) Yeah, I'm leaving. I'm up out of here. I am not. I ain't messing with that at all. No. All right. Well, Jordan, let's kick it to you, man. What do do you think your realization was? What was your kind of wake-up call or something that you had after you started, after after school? Your uh, first school, of course, because you're still in school. You know, you like studying for something, reading reading books and all whatnot. No. Nah, none of that. But uh, I mean, I think uh, when I think about this question, man, um, I got two realizations that kind of happened. Um, the first was you don't really truly know how much time school really took up, like how much time it took of your actual like whole day um, until you're out of it. And I will tell you, I do miss the times of not having academic stress. And we only four months five days away from that. So shout out to, you know, you're almost so there again. So close, the days. You're, you're almost there again. But uh, I think the first realization that I had was like, dang, I got to fill this time up with something. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I've been consistent. I'm always consistent with the gym. But then there's still hours. Like, I'm getting off work. Like, yo, like, what do I do? We pod, and then I still got, over, like, time to do stuff. And y'all already know I don't sleep. So I'm just trying to find ways of, like, yo, I don't know how to fill up my time. Like, I'm not much more, at that point in time, I'm not really trying to go out and party like that anymore. I'm kind of burnt out with that and, you know, all those other things. So it was like, dang, what do I fill my time with? And got back into reading, um, got back into some things that I really, really enjoyed. And like Hale was saying, being able to explore different options of, like, what is it that's going to kind of keep me pushing? You know, like, Trey, you always talk about all the time. Like, the one conversation we had was like, Yo, you gotta find different outlets for you that aren't taxing. But like, for yeah, me, you need to get you some. Yeah, yeah, all of my activities are really like intensive to the mind. Everything is like mind mm-hmm. intensive. So, um, that was the first realization for me, and I think I, I've been able to hammer that down. I can't wait to be able to read for fun because right now ain't no reading for fun happening right now. I don't know if y'all ever seen a literature and psychological research. It's nasty. I love psychology. So if my professors watch this, I love y'all. I love everything about my field. It is terrible to read. It's not enjoyable. It's really dry. Yeah. Cool. Sounds like it make me fall asleep. Very. But it's interesting. It's interesting. I, I, it's, it's really dope. It's just a really dry writer. Like, it's not really expressive writing style. If that makes sense. It's very factual based. A lot of like citing and all that type of stuff. So um, the second realization, though, that I had was and we were talking about this, uh, hell, uh, me and Hell were talking about this just before you hop on the, uh, back on before we start recording was like figuring out what is your worth like to companies. Like, I think the one thing that I had, like, I'm like, oh, like I got the degree and stuff like that. And I know how intelligent and what I could bring to the table. But like, that's not how companies are operating in terms of like we are going to operate in a way that's in the best interest of the, co- of the company, not like in the best interest of you. So you think you're worth X, Y, and Z because you know what you can potentially bring to the table, but they might not think that. And that was a really hard, like, what's the name? Because we, I'm trying to find a way of, like, yo, I want to I wanna advocate for myself to get the most, best pay and to reflect of what I'm I Right, but I'm you don't want to overstep that. You don't want to overstep that either. So, like, I'm doing that tangle. I'm talking to my mom, like, about, okay, how do I go into this uh, with my yearly coming up about a raise and what – what can I what can I point to in terms of like what's the important things to point to and saying I think I'm deserve this 
You know what I'm saying? So that was a really, really tricky dance because, um, I mean, you're really appreciative for the job that I have, and, or I'm really appreciative, but at the same time, like I'm getting older and I, I really want to expand not only, you know, my money, but at the same time, I have so much more knowledge now. And it's like, I think I deserve X, Y, Z. Yeah, and you have that experience. Right. So that was a tricky thing. I didn't know how hard those conversations was. You just think people would just pay you because you just you. And that's not how jobs work. And closed mouths get don't yeah. get fed. Like they ain't gonna just pay you because like you like you nice, bro. You gotta have those hard conversations. So I'm figuring it all out. But yeah, that's a tough tango to advocate for yourself. You just kind of I, mean, I think we all kind of just used to whatever they give us, we gonna make best of it. And that's kind of not the way we should be attacking these things. Right. All right, man. Well, for me, I think that um, I have probably the opposite, actually complete opposite problem that you guys had. I feel like um, that there just isn't enough time in the day ever. It's always something you want to do, always something you want to do, like hobbies. You got so you, you come out and you work 40 hours a week. Then after after you get off, you get off at four or five o'clock, whatever it is, then you want like if you if you play golf like for me i like to go to the range after i go to work so that's an hour gone already then i want to go to the gym that's another hour and a half gone driving there and back for all the places that's another 30 minutes i get home it's what eight o'clock gotta eat so then that's another 30 minutes then it's like it's 8 30 now and it's like all right what what are we gonna do we gonna sit up play the game and then, like, if you have a girlfriend, then you have to be, then you're hanging out with her some of the time. So then you're not doing that. And then you have, oh, like, problem, once you come home from college and then you have, <laughs> once you come home from college, then you have, like, your home friends that you want to hang out with. And you have your college friends that you still want to hang out with because you just spent four or five years with them. So it's, like, you're accustomed to hanging out with them a lot. But then you haven't seen your home friends. And then you have home friends that are, like, move different places, and they're just all over the place. So whenever they come in town, it's always somebody's birthday. You're always doing something. Like, then if you want to play, like, do you want to do your own hobbies? Like, playing, I like to play intramural volleyball, softball, like, things like that. That's a whole night gone. So it's just, I feel like everything adds up, and there's never enough time for everything. Like, I always, I think I need, like, at least two, three more hours in the day. Man, I would love that. Man, I would love that. Yeah, that uh, that must be nice. Um, I would just say, you know, for people like me and Jordan, uh, we actually do work 40 hours in a week and work, you know, in the job and the office setting and all that stuff. I do not believe one bit that Trey works 40 hours. I've seen what he does. <laughs> I've seen his Instagram just like everyone else. I really do that not believe crazy. 40 hours. I'll just be honest with you guys. Um, hey. Please, on the same name. Uh, on the same uh, point. Point. On here. The next episode, Trey's going to put his pay stub on here to show that he worked 40 hours. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> and while we're at it, I just want to let our viewers know that I'm currently, if you just listen to this, I'm on a 1942 airline headset right now. I might take a couple calls after this and sell you some Jeez, insurance. Bro. That's probably fraud. But just know Keep that up. the amount of technical difficulties we ran through on this episode to set this up was insane. Nah, don't nah, let don't, your little brother take laptops all over. Hey, you know what? You, you, see how to, you see how he tried to collect this all in the week? It was him. Nah, we separating this. There's oh, segregation man. going on around here, dog. We that is crazy. Dog. Yeah, we, you wow. the only one. That's segregation. That that I. <laughs> hey, hold on. Time out, time out, time out now. Now, you have a headset yourself that has a cord coming down that looks like you might be the fakest DJ ever. I don't even know why you out here trying to come at me when you actually chose to wear that. Hey, listen. Hey, you know what? They get the job done. I, I ain't straight away. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, you know, get the job done. You know what? Actually, let's get off of me, dog. Right, let's go. Go ahead. Uh, Choo-choo. Let's go.